doing, guys? You know, we might be a small crowd, but I think we're a pretty awesome crowd. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here tonight. Uh, we did some heavy lifting on the way in. Uh, half of my crowd here actually helped us make space for these empty seats, which hopefully will be filled very soon. So um, I want to thank you guys once again for coming out to Legends Comedy Night. We have an awesome, awesome show set up for you guys tonight. Um, our first comic is a local comic from right here in Lima, Ohio. Um, so have very high expectations for him. Uh, put your hands together for a really good friend of mine, Dan Fraley. Yeah, Dan. Woo! Keep it going for Gina, everybody. Woo! There you go. Uh, I'll start this out by saying I have two sets. Uh, I have a clean set that I can do. Woo! Yeah, oh, I do. Hold on, I'll, I'll get to that, sir. You shut up. All right. I have two sets. I have a clean set that I do. I could do it at a church, but I could do it like a really cool library, you know. And I can do that pretty much anywhere. And then I have a bad set. So by round of applause, I already have your vote. Who was the good set? And who was the bad set? Oh yes. You want dirty? Well, we are gonna get dirty, sir. I uh. I've cracked these over the years, doing some of the most god awful shows with that man right there. Uh, so I'm enjoy honored. Me. I'm going to start with one that's not necessarily dirty, but it's something to think about. I'm going to do an impression, my impression <laughs> of a magician with Alzheimer's. Yeah, excuse me, man. I for my next trick, I need a volunteer. What's my name? <laughs> Thank you. Wait, where am I? What's this? Before anyone says anything, my grandfather has Alzheimer's and he loves that joke. At least that's what I tell him. Um, I'm kidding. He's dead. Now, now hold on. I'm not a monster. He died yesterday. My grandfather died when I was 11. I'm 35, okay? I've had time. When my grandfather died, Space Jam was a new release, okay? It's cool. Now, now we're going to get to the dirty stuff. You know the thing about sex is, sex is great. Sex is the goal. Everyone says, you know, people invent things just to have sex. People, all they ever do is sex. We have things called sex on the beach, better than sex. Sex, the guy who invented graham crackers created them because he thought they would stop impure thoughts. The guy who invented graham crackers thought graham crackers was better than sex. <laughs> Nothing is better than sex. Nothing at all. <laughs> you know, I know that. Thomas... Uh, Alexander Graham Bell. I'm going to give Thomas Edison credit for this. I'm Thomas Edison. Anyway, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. His first phone call, his first phone call was to his assistant saying, hey, I need you. That's true. His second phone call was to his wife to arrange sex. 78% of all cigarettes are smoked after sex. I just made that up, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. All right? The thing about sex is sex can get weird. Sex can get bad. There was a guy recently, he was caught having sex with a horse again. <laughs> no. Let me clarify, the guy was arrested for having sex again with the same horse. <laughs> so they arrest him and they take him to jail for horse fucking and apparently in that state it's a misdemeanor, look it up, and they let him out. Now my thing is, when he goes back to the same horse, you think the horse saw it coming the next time like, the first time, you're a horse, you're doing your horse thing. You're in a pen or whatever. You don't think anything. Next thing you know, there's another carrot. All I'm saying is, the second time, you know what that guy looks like. Here's the thing, I don't care if you're an animal or a human. If a guy fucks you without your permission, you remember his face. So do you think he was in the pen? All of a sudden he looks, he sees that guy, he's up at the fence line, tweaking his nipples, and he's like, oh, shit. And just like when you get really crafty with the... Uh, with Parliament, nay always means no. <laughs> Worst story ever, some people think sex is more important than the life. There was a guy a couple years ago in Russia named Sergei Tuganov. Sergei Tuganov had two female friends who dared him that he could not sexually satisfy both of them for 12 hours straight. So he was a betting man. He took a, he took a half a bottle of Viagra and he went to town. And you know what happened? He made the distance. 
He went 12 hours. Threesome. This is a god among men. Yes, he is the Lance Armstrong of fucking. That's what he was. Well, for two reasons. One, because we know he's full of medications. And two, because you know at the end he's covered in sweat. His hands are up in the air. He's, just, he's expecting a gold medal. He's not going to get one, but he deserves one, damn it. He does it. He did it. He's amazing. He then rolls to his side and dies of a heart attack. And what science call the greatest death ever. You know how many people's last words in life are, uh, or I wonder where the mommy bear is? This guy lived the dream. He does, when he died, you're like, yeah, that's a great way to go. That's the, you go to heaven, that's a great story. You'd have a bunch of people like, well, how'd you die? Oh, heart attack. How'd you die? Oh, you know, you know, bear attack. How'd you die? Oh, I have a story to tell you. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, so that's uh, there was there was one more I, I wanted to share with you. It, it, it was it, I'm gonna I'm gonna spoiler alert. It involves a dick, and <laughs> just a heads up in case you were you were expecting the church material to come out. It ain't coming out. Um, yeah, there was a guy in Spain uh, a few years ago. He uh, he got his dick caught in a sex toy and it was a it was the casing was made of metal and the only way they could get it off was with a saw oh God. and the only place they could find the saw was the firehouse oh God. so that guy by the way had to have his sex toy removed by firemen <laughs> You don't live that down. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't work like that. Like, here's the thing. In the unlikely event, the unlikeliest of event, that I get my dick stuck in a sex toy, and that's permanent. That's how that goes. <laughs> I'm not telling anybody. I'm telling nobody. Because you'd be 90 years old in nursing home. They're like, what's he doing? Uh, he's 96 years old. They're like, eh, he's the guy with the dick thing. Like, damn it. <laughs> so if I look at him like, well, this is permanent now. All right. Because I'm not going to tell nobody. The next person who's going to see that thing is going to be the coroner. <laughs> because there's a thing. Who's he going to tell, all right? But he's got this thing on his dick. And I yank on it pretty hard. <laughs> he takes that story to his grave. That's a fail-proof plan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> some, of these I've, some of these I've actually don't think I've ever told on stage. I don't know why the hell I'm saying them again, but here we are. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, just tell you a little story about myself. I like to do with these. Uh, my ex and I broke up over math. Uh, I usually get weird looks when I say that, so let me explain. Uh, my ex and I were together for four years, and by the time that we broke up, uh, she had been in two threesomes. I don't say that to brag because I have been in zero. There's a little story problem for you. Solve for X now. I'm from a small town, uh, from a very small town. Anyone here from a small town? Relatively small. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ben's like, no, one. I know, not me. Ben's from Lyme, I know. I'm from a small town called McGuffey. Uh, McGuffey's less than 500 people. It's a village, actually. And uh, when, you're, when you look like me, you can't say your home village because it sounds like something from a nature documentary. Back in my home village. Before the white man. Like, you can't do that. You know, uh, it's not. It's not. The, it's not the fact that we got to be small. I, I'm not bothered by that. Not at all. It's not that you have to do an ancestry.com search to make sure you're not going to make a flipper baby with your prom date. It's not that. <laughs> no. The biggest problem with McGuffey is, and I swear to God, this is true. North Street and South Street intersect. <laughs> Don't think about that for too long, or you will have an aneurysm. What happened was. They built a road on the south side of town, which is about 10 feet away from the north side of town, and they called it South Street. And then, years later, they built another road that intersected on South Street at a direct right angle. And they could have called it anything. They could have called it Columbus Street. They could have <laughs> called it Main Street. They could have called it Street Street. <laughs> it would have made more sense than the city council getting around, let's call it North Street. And that's why there's 500 people left, because everyone else went, oh, they're in charge. I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> that's my hometown, people. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm going to 
to talk about love. We talked about sex. Let's talk about drugs. Let's just do the cycle, folks. Woo. Yeah. yeah. Woo. I don't do drugs. But uh, and you probably just talk about drugs and we think, you'd be amazed every year. You research these things. You'd be amazed every year the amount of times that someone goes to a drive through restaurant, orders food, and in addition to the food they order, they also get a bag of pot. You would be amazed how many times this happens at a KFC. Because other restaurants, they drug test. They're trying to keep them out. KFC promotes them to management. They're like, oh, you're holding. Come see the colonel, all right? <laughs> but people are trying to catch up. McDonald's, there was a guy in Philadelphia a couple years ago. He was, a, he was a cook at McDonald's, which is really the nicest way to say cook at McDonald's. He was cooking at McDonald's when they found him. He had 187 bags of crack on him yes. at work. Yes. <laughs> he was making $1,500 a week just from selling crack. <laughs> now, my first question was, why is he still working at McDonald's? Okay? <laughs> if, you're making, if, you're, if you're making $6,000 a month just selling drugs, you don't need, is there some kind of culinary thing you're not getting in that job? Is that... What's going on there? No. You need to quit one of those things. I don't care which one, but one of them, because then you'd have a great story. Later on, you're, you know, later on, you're with the McDonald's people, and the br lunch rush is getting bad, you go, hey, this ain't too bad. I used to sell crack. Or you can be with your crack buddies, they go, hey, this ain't too bad. I used to work at McDonald's. <laughs> Either way, you need to fix your life. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're seeing me figure shit out in my own head right now. That's great. <laughs> What's going on? Who knows? Who's going to win? Who can tell? Oh, my goodness. Uh, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> that's, a long, that's a long conversation by itself. I don't know. I'm a comedian. Yes, I am a comedian. That's the, that's the fucking problem. All right. No, oh, let's go back to sex. Why the fuck not? All right, here's the fun one. I find a lot of weird ones. Here's another fun one. A guy got caught having sex with a pool toy four times. Again, it was the same pool toy. And I thought they should have at least taken it away from him after the second one. Because he's clearly not going to a pool party. He ain't showing up to a pool party with his dick and a pool noodle. No one's expecting that. This guy is fucking it. We all know it. And I'll leave you with this one, one more little sex joke, because I'm going to get the dirty, wrap it in a nice little burrito. Yeah. And I, that might be offensive to Mexican people. I'm sorry that I besmirched burritos. Point is, there was, a couple, there was another case where these uh, two women were on trial for murder. And uh, it's not a great case, but I, I thought about it very fucking weird, because I'm pretty messed up. And the story was that these two girls go over to this guy's drug dealer's house. And what they offered him oral sex. And apparently this being one of the fringe benefits of selling drugs, he accepted. While one of them is in the act, the other one uh, comes across and shoots him in the face. Whoa. Yes, it took a turn. And they're on trial for murder. And the bad part, one part of me is like, oh man, that's, that's screwed up, man. That's murder. Like, I don't care what the guy did. You don't kill somebody. And then the other part of me went, let me see what the girls look like. Because you think about it, there are worse ways to go. There are worse ways to go. I'm just saying, that's another story when you get to heaven. How'd you die? I have a story to tell. My name's Dan Bradley. Thank you very much. Keep going, with Dan Bradley, everybody. Oh, come on, get it going. Give it up for Mark at the bar. Without him, we wouldn't be here. Give it up for Mark and the Bar, guys! To Mark! To Mark! Everybody, to Mark! I don't have a drink, because no one's bought me one. Hint, hint, not to Mark. Oh my goodness, guys. So how many married couples we have in here tonight? Clap it up! Give it up for yourselves! Come on, married couples! Don't wave! Clap! Woo! What about my single folks? Single folks? Woo! And hey, what about my divorced folks? Divorced folks? Woo! Yeah, you know why he screams the loudest? 
because he's divorced. He's excited. Oh man. Uh, so uh, they do have a saying about divorces. Why? Why are they so expensive? Because they're worth it. That's exactly right. Am I right? Hey, it's the same guy. Check it out. All right, guys. You guys ready for your next comic? Yeah. All right, guys. Always put your hands together for a really funny man. This guy's open for Donnie Baker, and he is here to entertain you. Put your hands together for Lee Mays. Thank you. Now, I know I look like I don't belong up here on stage. I do know that I look like I belong 500 feet away from a school. Now, I'm originally from Ironton, Ohio. I like, yeah, boo. I like to call Ironton the city that always dozes off because it's laced with fentanyl. Now, if you don't know where Ironton is, it's on the border where Billy Ray Cyrus should have been aborted. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> He's not dead yet. Although I, my birthday wish hasn't come true yet. Anyway, and it's on the border where people still wear their hair in a rat tail. <laughs> Put it this way, iron to the so white trash it makes Crydersville feel better about itself. <laughs> Are y'all ready for Halloween? <laughs> I love Halloween because you can pretend to be something you're not, just like on Facebook. <laughs> One time I saw a guy my age trick-or-treating. I'm 43. If you're an adult who goes trick-or-treating, you don't need to beg for candy. You need to beg for a job. Ooh, get a little clue who goes to home here. Is the number one employer in, here in Lima disability checks a month or some shit? I mean, Jesus Christ. Let's talk some more spooky shit. Do you guys remember Marilyn Manson? Yeah. Yeah. In the 90s, it was rumored that Marilyn Manson had his ribs removed so he could suck his own dick. But I was a fat kid growing up. I had my ribs removed so I could tie my own shoes. It was... Ah, oh, shit. Christmas is just around the corner. Just like the guy I just bought heroin from. I am not. <laughs> Actually, I'm just addicted to porn because I can't afford heroin. Now, that time of year, Christmas just around the corner, people buy scented candles around Christmas time to make their home smell like cinnamon or a QB burger. <laughs> Did you know that if you combine the smells of cigarette smoke, Doritos, and dirty diapers, you get a Yankee candle called West Virginia? <laughs> Maybe you can put coal in that too. I don't know. <laughs> Coal's the future! Anyway. <laughs> I don't know, guys. One of those oh, nights. <laughs> you know, whether we like it or not, religion plays like a big part in the world, whether we like it or not. And my mom used to say, God is everywhere. You all believe that? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what's actually everywhere? Dollar General. <laughs> Dollar General is everywhere. Wars aren't raged in the parking lots of Dollar General. Unless you were me a couple of weeks ago fighting a homeless guy for a Jimmy John sandwich. It just doesn't go on. Maybe here in Lima, I don't know. That was inappropriate, wasn't it? Did you think that was inappropriate? No. 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 
Let's say something that is inappropriate. <laughs> Has anyone here ever kissed someone with breath so bad they eat their ass to get the taste out of their mouth? <laughs> Has that happened to you two? I'm taking a poll. It's like a census here in Lima. It's close enough. We'll look, look for the uh, sex tape on Pornhub of YouTube in a second. <sighs> Let's keep up with the Christian comedy, shall we? Yeah! <laughs> One time during Sunday school, I ate some magic mushrooms. Not only did I talk to God and Jesus, but I also talked to a blue giraffe named Greg. <laughs> And Greg said, if you think this religion is stupid, wait until you hear about Scientology. <laughs> and then I got sued by Tom Cruise. <laughs> now I think I'm in the closet. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, my grandmother's getting older. She can't figure out new technology these days. Like, uh, the other day, I had to help her with her vibrator. Now, we got it figured out. It comes in two speeds. Then she had a heart attack and died. Now, I started my midlife crisis early. At the age of 40, I got my first tattoo. Right, because I can't afford a Corvette. Now, Why can't I afford a Corvette? Look at me. <laughs> Trust me, I look like someone that buy it, that sells your kids weed now. <laughs> but, uh, I've got anxiety issues. Does anyone here have anxiety? Two people. Yeah. A lot of my friends say I should smoke weed to help with my anxiety. But how's laughing at a jack-o'-lantern during Halloween going to help my anxiety? <laughs> Shit. I, uh, my girlfriend and I have been together for over three years. And she finally said yes. To anal. sex tapes on porn of now, so. <laughs> My girlfriend pencils in her eyebrows. I think that's a little weird. If she can pencil in her eyebrows, I can use a crayon to make my dick look bigger. <laughs> she still can't find it. We use a highlighter. <laughs> oh, shit. Did you all have the sex talk with your parents? So, so how the fuck did you learn about sex? Puppet, Sesame Street, Catholicism, how? I mean, let's... I'll never forget the sex talk that I had with my parents. It cost me $3.99 a minute. Ugh. <laughs> oh. I learned from chat rooms too. I do look like someone that belongs on a registry, don't I? Now, when I was growing up, my dad wasn't very affectionate at all, right? Like, he didn't even want to hold me, my mom, or a job. <laughs> but, uh, I was a, uh, well, I still am. I was a big comic book fan when I was growing up, and I used to think my dad was Thor until I realized he just liked hitting me with a hammer. <laughs> it's all right, though. <laughs> I, uh, I was a fat kid growing up, obviously. And uh, my dad used to scare me into trying to lose weight. Like, he would say things like, Lee, if you don't lose weight, you're going to die of a heart attack. And I was like, eight. 
And then he was like, Lee, if you don't lose weight, we're going to put on your tombstone. Here lies Lee, nice and sweet. He died because he had too much to eat. My dad ate potato chips, pork rinds, he had gout, and he died of a heart attack back in 2005. So you want to know what I put on his tombstone? <laughs> Here lies my dad. He wasn't rich. He died because karma's a bitch. <laughs> hey, my name's Lee Mays, Lima, Ohio. You guys been great. You can find me on Facebook if I don't get banned again. <laughs> or Twitter. Let's give it up for your hostess, Gina uh, Chippiazzi. Is that how you pronounce I don't I'm sorry, I got my GED. I don't know how to pronounce certain names or words. <laughs> give it up for Gina. It's me. I just go by Gina because when you try and say Chia Pazzi, people are just like, Chia Pet Pizza? <laughs> Which I got in the 90s, by the way. Who else got a Chia Pet when they were like a kid in the 90s? I'm the only one. It's okay. Oh, guys. Are you guys excited for the rest of the show? Now, guys, this is a bar. And this is a comedy show, so we call it a bar comedy show. So the cool thing about bar comedy shows is they're a lot more precocious. So you guys can be loud and wild and engage with our comics, and it's a lot more fun that way. So I want you guys to pretend with me. So I'm like, all right, guys, this is so funny. I saw a funny joke. Now, like, laugh and, like, like yell laugh at me. I'm like, ah! <laughs> 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 all right, the front is doing really good, but the back, I need some help. Like, you can clap, you can whistle. Uh, you can buy me drinks. It's all good. So, all right, everybody. I said something funny. Oh, this is so funny. Ah! All right, that was a lot better. So, uh, we're getting we're getting better at this, guys. So, are you for, you ready for your next comic? All right. She is a comic, a filmmaker. Her new DVD is Stand Up or Fall Down. Patsy B. Let's give it up for Gina and Lee and our first comic. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. I'm middle-aged. You just got to excuse me. Middle-aged. Yeah, you know. Old. Okay. Let's move on, shall we? First of all, I'm really excited to be here. And uh, I'm glad we have... Uh, oh, where are nationwide people go? Are they gone already? Yeah, they were offended. Oh, because I said I was old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Let's move on, shall we? So, uh, first and foremost, I am celebrating. I am celebrating. i got a number of things I'm celebrating. I'm in love. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. We're getting married. Yeah. He doesn't know it. It's fantastic. So, uh, but I've not always been a fan of dating. Uh, I used to hate it really bad. I would do all kinds of things to avoid it. I hated it when my friends would say things like, love is in the air. And I'm like, oh, that's the smell. <laughs> uh, poor shit. Anyway, uh, it's, it's been interesting. Eventually I tried online dating. Uh, I did eHarmony. Yeah. That ended on a flat note. <laughs> I tried plenty of fish. I found out I was allergic. And uh, the truth is I do have a type. I like uh, my guys how I like my cars, you know? Sporty, low mileage, slightly used, divorced available dads, DADs. Yeah, that's my type. And uh, it's cool though. Now I'm in a long term relationship with a great guy. He's smart, ambitious, he adores me, he's got a nickname for me, calls me Sweetie. And that's cute, kind of old-fashioned. 
But the real issue is English is his second language. And I think he thinks the sweeter something is, the sexier it is, because he'll change it up, right? He'll call me cookie or candy, and last night he called me diabetic coma. <laughs> I told my best friend I was dating a younger guy, and she's like, Patsy, it's official, you're a cougar. Wow. I'm like, really? How do you go from practicing celibate to predator? <laughs> I think only priests can do that. <laughs> Assistant head coaches, Jared from Subway. <laughs> Did I miss anybody? Yeah, there's a big list. <laughs> So the second thing I'm celebrating, I am officially retired after 35 years doing the same job. Woo! Yeah, retired people, oh my gosh. Same job for 35 years. Married people know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I did kind of an honorable thing. I worked with adults with disabilities. Yeah, that would be the House and Senate. I thought we could agree on that. Um, I did uh, want to point out that I, you guys might not be able to see it, but I have a walking cast on. And here's the story. When I was 18, I broke this foot from pirouette, from ballet. I broke the other foot when I was 25 from polka, and I have sprained and ripped the ligaments on this foot from salsa. That officially makes me a break dancer. And I wish those were all jokes, but that's all true. That's all true. I, I break easily. Don't touch me. Um, <laughs> don't touch me. Back one. Anyway, uh, <laughs> oh, Lordy. so uh, on stage, I don't use my last name because I have a complicated name like Gina does. Yeah, yeah complicated name. Woo! Yeah, bye -bye. Uh, In German, my last name is pronounced the Batendorfer. Yeah, comedy gold right there. Dorf means village, a botan means like big or brawny, so loosely translated. My last name means fat ass of the city. Yeah. And I always thought when I got married, I'd marry another German. And I would just hyphenate my name, right? It'd be something like this. Patricia Anna Bottendorfer Wiener Schnitzel. Or Patricia Anum Batendorfer Farfenugen. Right? That works. Can't wait. Uh, so uh, I come from a long line of sportsmen and hunters, so I understand this current debate about gun control. Uh, everybody in my family owns a gun for hunting and domestic violence. Yeah. Our family crest is a bulletproof vest. <laughs> yeah. And our uh, family reunion involves uh, first hour open bar and seven hours calling 911 and finding the safe room. <laughs> and I've done pretty well, that's all I gotta say. Sure, uh, <laughs> uh, what else? I got all kinds of stuff. Uh, I am officially middle-aged. Middle-aged, my biological time clock is turned into a sundial in permanent shade. <laughs> Two months ago, I went to my OBGYN and I told her I needed medication or I was going to prison. <laughs> the women understand. <laughs> And I told her I got it all figured out. I just need two prescriptions, one for Xanax or Zoloft and one for Valium. And she said, nope, those are addictive. And I said, so is vodka, but I don't have a $5 copay for that. Yeah. I thought she was kind of bitchy about it. But anyway, 
Come on, they hand out pills all the time. Damn it. Anyway, what else? Uh, probably the most important thing, my last celebration. You guys ready to celebrate with me? Yeah. I have lost 129 pounds. Woo! And I have a before picture. You want to see it? Yeah. Yeah? become this obnoxious, oversharing stranger <laughs> by dragging this picture everywhere. <laughs> Librarians hate it. They hate it. Those bitches. <laughs> but, uh, you know, being a lifelong dieter, I've always tried to get down to my original lowest weight. Ten pounds, ten ounces. <laughs> Baby weight. Yeah, right. And the truth is, losing weight is easy. It's easy. But keeping it off, that's the trick. So I hired a personal trainer at one point, or as I like to call him, a fat whisperer. I worked out. I really enjoyed push ups. I loved the orange flavor. And swimming, that was like one of my favorite things. When I swam, I wore a two-piece suit, a hooded sweatshirt with capri pants. Yeah. And my best friend, she is also a chronic yo-yo dieter, and she's kind of the worst kind of dieter because she's already skinny. But, oh, it makes me crazy. But every month, she's got a new theory on how she's going to lose weight. A few months ago, she calls me up. Patsy, I've decided from now on, I'm only going to eat fruit with no skin. Like, that's called juice. <laughs> right? Right? So this month, she calls me up, and she's kind of proud. I've done some research on the internet, and I think I'm going to try this medicine called Ally. It's a fat blocker. I said, great. I might need to borrow some because my fat, it's been a cock blocker. It's okay. So uh, here's the deal, Leo. I used to be a triple extra large or a 46 triple D. What? That's ridiculous, but it's true. I was. And now I am a... Large petite, which I didn't even know was a thing, honestly. I'm like, cool, I'm a large petite. And then after I thought about it, I'm like, large petite? That sounds like jumbo shrimp. Right? And we all know that's delicious. Right? It's delicious. We love it. So I have found out that not everybody's happy for me with my weight loss, in particular, a lot of other women. Okay, don't turn on me, ladies. Hear me out. Yeah. I was at the Funny Bone in Columbus a few weeks ago. I had a big show. Had a long dress, lots of cleavage, big hair, makeup, all that. And I walk into the showroom, and there's this husband and wife sitting at a table. And as I pass by, I can hear the husband say, she's pretty. And then I hear the wife say, that's a man. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, bitches be hating. That's right. Like, bitches be hating. That's how it happens. So I have a few more jokes for you, then I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I do a lot of volunteer work now that I'm retired besides doing filmmaking. I do have a film. If anybody's interested in buying a copy of the DVD, I do have some with me, 10 bucks if you're interested. It's a documentary about amateur stand-up comedy and how do you become a comic. A lot of these kind of shows, you end up in a bar late at night telling jokes, usually to three other comics. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. 
And uh, so it's an interesting process. I followed five comics around for eight years. Wow. Yeah. And I had three professional comics narrated what comedy is and how to write a joke and all that. So it's a it's an interesting movie. It's only 50 or 64 minutes, including bloopers. So if you're interested, see me after the show. Okay, that was my plug. I don't know if I'm allowed to even sell anything, but now I yeah. am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So whatever you want, uh, Me now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So I have a lot of groups that I work with, and sometimes I like to bring food reinforcement, and this is when I get to cheat too sometimes. So uh, a few weeks ago, I was at Dunkin' Donuts inside, and there was a police officer standing in line in front of me, and I noticed he had one of those WWJD, what would Jesus do bracelets, which are kind of old right now. I mean, like, can you say out of date, whatever. And uh, you know, Jesus forgives, whatever. And so, I thought, well, that's kind of cool. This cop was wearing that, right? So I uh, tapped him on the shoulder, and he looked at me, and I gave him a thumbs up, pointed at his wrist. I'm like, good for you, man, WWJD. He's like, oh, when cops wear the WWJD, it means who wants jelly donuts? Uh. Yeah. And I laughed because he had a gun. <laughs> and a taser and backup. But you guys have been great. Give it up for yourselves. Woo! Give it up for the other comics. And bring up your lovely hostess with the mostest, Gina. Keep going, Patsy B, everybody. Hey, Lee, I have a question for you. In like the 60s, 70s, were you ever in Lake Baressa, California? Because I'm pretty sure you're the Zodiac Killer. I'm not that crazy. Not Ted Cruz. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, I got a question for you. Are you guys ready for your headliner? Yes. Woo! No. Better. Are you guys ready for your headliner? Yes. More than that, I need to hear Mark scream too. Mark, are you ready for your headliner? Woo! All right, guys, this is the bad boy of comedy, the one, the only, Jerry Go. Thanks for Gina. Give it up for Gina. Yeah. She's great. I'm the bad boy of comedy because I'm the only one here that actually smokes weed. I'm embarrassed for you people. Uh, what the fuck is wrong here with this whole thing? With you guys are straightening up and cleaning up your acts? I know you got jobs in retirement, but smoke a little doobie. Get yourself a cookie. Get high. Say it's your life. It's passing in front of you. Do it. I know you got insurance and benefits, but smoke the weed. Smoke the weed. Buy the cookie. Kill a man for can of butter. <laughs> the Keebler Elves are right now uh, in a war. They're uh, in a war with the, uh, the Rice Krispie guys. Uh, the Rice Krispie guys were moving meth, you know, snack crackle, pop, 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 you know. And uh, they moved on. And now there's there's a big war for can of butter because medibles are, are as good as money. So uh, so if anybody wants to know if you can sell anything at one of these shows, I'm just saying. I'm looking. No. Nobody? You guys all stunned silence because one of you is a narc, right? Who's the narc? <laughs> Just find the narc. There's always one asshole in the room who's an informant. Who's the CI? Who's the fucking CI? Because I haven't done comedy in three weeks, and I got a comedy nut on some people, and you guys are it. So we're going to all pull together so I can give you a gymnasium fest in your face here of wonderful comedy. It's coming right at you because you don't. Because if you're not listening, I can say jizz national, and nobody flinches because you're still stunned because I smoke pot. Get over it. Get over it. Lighten up. Okay, I know. I'm a little upset too. I mean, there is no tampon dispenser in the men's room. I, there isn't. I know. I don't know if I can feel like a man coming in here without knowing I can't have a tampon because it's my right. And uh, do we get too politically edgy? Go smoke the weed now. We'll see you later. We lost the two crowds in front. They start too early. They just fall apart. Like last comic standing, they just start dying at the bar. The first one, the insurance agents. We had we had the nationwide lady and the husband who she's taken a large policy out on. Uh, she is going to murder him, for the record. She is going to murder him. I'm real good about calling this shit. I was, I'm right about this conspiracy shit, dude, because I'm in the know. I know what's going on. I know what's going on, okay? 
to come with your Project Mockingbird with me and not MK Ultras. I get it, motherfuckers. I know exactly what this story is. This ain't no fucking street shit. You want street shit? You went to the wrong fucking night, folks. Because that lady right there worked for the insurance company, and she's screwing the insurance companies from the inside. I love that woman. I love that woman. I felt bad that I roofied her, but I liked her. I felt bad for, you know, but she's got to go home with him. She needs it to take the edge off. Cause, I mean, speaking of tampons, I mean, are all Ohio State fans like that guy? I hope you're not. Because that, that would explain the tampons. Holy shit, when that guy went on for about 20 minutes about Ohio State, I don't know nothing about football. Do I look like a guy who does sports? I smoke dope. I got shit to do. I, I want to think and expand my mind. Watch a bunch of fucking mongoloids run around this. I don't need that. Fuck your sports. I'm not retarded. It's, you know, I mean, they're all retarded. They get these helmet injury wounds. They're all like, I can't even do, can't wipe my ass, I'm dying. And you're like, you know what? The whole time you were going up to the chain to being a mongoloid, you were a dick to me. So fuck you and your concussions. Enjoy the shakiness. I don't give a rat's ass. I'm smoking my own dope. I can get it now. I'm uh, living next to Illinois. They're going full recreational soon. There's going to be a monster party at my place. It's going to be a monster party. Because we just degraded. Sorry, I know you guys are... I'm going to convert you. I'm going to convert you one person at a time. I was going to work on Ohio State. But he's gone. <laughs> he split. He was my project for the night. I smiled and made nice with him. I was like, oh, yeah, let's talk. Like, eh, son, let me find out about what's in your head, sir. And he disagrees with his wife, and he kept going on about floodplains and how, well, when they cash out the insurance, we all have to pay for that. And he kept going on and on and on. And I could see the look in her eye. I'm like, I want to see her murder him. I do. <laughs> And Joe said, do crowd work. And I'm like, I just want to do the forensic investigation on what happened to that guy. How did she do it? I'm thinking it's going to be antifreeze. Because he, he's going to be a bowl of it on the, on the stunt counter. And he's just going to... Okay. Right. Like, I can't see I can't seem to see anymore. Oh, oh. Be, oh man. It would be a great payoff. It would just be a great payoff. You know. It's fun. Well, I mean, you know what? Once you get in the know and you start watching people die, it's real fun to be able to spot the ones who did it themselves and the ones who Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Am I right? That he didn't do it. There's no fucking way. He's, like, he's a six foot tall dude with a bunk bed and he uh, laid down on the floor side. I mean, it's too uncomfortable. You get a cramp before you hang yourself. I tried. You can't doorknob kill yourself. That is a myth. Okay? That is a myth. Epstein isn't even dead anyway. He's with Jamal Khashoggi. They needed an extra for uh, Uyghur. But that's a whole other story. You guys don't want to even know about how many people aren't dead. Tony Rodham is not dead. Okay, I'm just saying that. Hillary comes out, oh, we lost Tony. He's like, really? No funeral. Oh, he flipped. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just tired of her. I'm like, I can't wait. Somebody just throw a bucket of water on her, please. Enough already. Enough. Now I've got to worry about not getting my tampon dispenser in my men's room. I got issues way more. I mean, you'd be controlled by Twitter. You guys all Twitter people? Yeah. Yeah, instantaneous manipulation. Isn't it great? <laughs> awesome. Now I know people I don't even know I can comment on. I'm like, oh, Brian Steltzer from CNN. I stalk that curly looking motherfucker every night. I'm like, oh, I, I, you know, I'm just, cause I just don't like the guy. I mean, it's your, because when they say fake news, for the record, they're not talking about not doing the right news. It's about the CIA running the news and telling you this shit. Shh. CNN. They're taping. See, I know. And this tape's going to come back to them. And they're going to watch this tape. And John Brennan's going to go, wait, he looked and whistled at me. Oh, my God. They're investigating me this week. Oh, God, the spy is over. Oh, God, the deep state's going to die. Oh, let's worry about politics. There's no politics. It's a setup. It's a scam. It's a whole hustle, man. It's a whole hustle. There's so many hustles you guys even fucking know about. There is an everlasting gobstopper. <laughs> there is. And they're keeping it from you. Because it's bankrupt the economy. Kids with little pocket money. They can get a candy all day. Oh, no, 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 not this kid. Nope. You're going to pay through the nose. You're going to pay $1.50 for a fucking you know, nut roll. They don't even do really good sin. For, you know what I mean? You get the... Yeah, the ones at Walmart, and then they break it down to a dollar one day on sale, and you go, well, it's always a dollar, it's normally a dollar fifty. It was never worth a dollar fifty. They lied to you, like Hobby Lobby lies about their prices. You know what I mean? <laughs> about all their prices. Hobby Lobby lies about all their prices. They're the worst fake Christians in the world. They, they, they have every price is a sale price. 
That's the regular goddamn price. That's not a sale. You're lying. Quit it. Quit selling refuge from, from a third world nation and we're using slave labor to make it so we can have rusty shit on the walls. That's great. That's great. This is where we got this. This is a Hobby Lobby special right here. It came over. It came over on the flat in the can container. We had a couple dead Chinese dudes underneath it, but don't worry about them. We saved the organs, so we're making money all over, all over. Anybody need any eyes? I got some brown ones. Yeah. Just. I, I don't know, man. I feel like I should quit now. I just got an organ donor joke over. Oh, this, you guys are woke as fuck. I love this. This is great. I'm glad the score left. I'm glad they're gone. They were totally cock blocking this room. I know. You know what I mean? I'm just looking right in the tape because they're going to watch it later, too, because you're going to send them a copy. Quit being assholes in bars, would you? Just quit being. Just not everybody wants to hear your stock jokes, okay? Uh, this, this is why the Joker movie to me is poetry. I don't know. Have you guys seen the movie Joker? Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. It's poetry, man. It's poetry. It's about comedy. It's about stand-up comedy. It has nothing to do with Batman. That's incidental. That's incidental. That has nothing to do with it. Because it's about this guy who's so damaged inside, he laughs when he cries. Oh, God, the pathos, man. That's a comic. He goes to an open mic, and if he had just set up his fucking lead-in about how I'm damaged inside, so I laugh when I cry, his bit would have worked. <laughs> And he would never have gotten on television with Robert De Niro with the opportunity to shoot that non-funny fucker in the face. But that's a whole nother story. But that's really what it comes down to, is the purveyors of comedy were intentionally made not funny, so you would hate him. Why does Hollywood keep trying to push Robert De Niro on you as though he's funny? He's not. He's never been funny. He's always Robert fucking De Niro. And you know what? When the Joker said, and you've got this coming, and boom! Justice. Robert De Niro is dead. <laughs> That's the problem, and this is exactly what the Joker said. These arbiters of comedy telling us what is funny and what's not funny, but they miss the whole greater picture. So to me, this is no comic villain. He's the fucking hero. He sets the stage, and as a matter of fact, I wish he'd get more appearances on late night talk show hosts, because Kimmel needs to go. <laughs> they all need to go, okay? Let's just... Let's just rephrase this whole talk show mentality that all these fucking talking head douchebags with no talent, Jimmy Fallon, are just sitting out there wasting, wasting precious airtime that's going to be going to me someday. Because they're all getting arrested. Because they're all pedophiles and they're all Satan worshippers. But that's a whole other part of the key thing. You don't want to find out, but yes, you do. Yes, Bill Maher and his red shoes. Let's ask you about that. Oh, my God. Ooh. Did I go that far? I can't go that far. You guys don't know about the red shoes. That's red shoes for sacrificial killing. That's the red shoes soaked up the blood. Oh my God. So when they're out there. Don't talk about Fight Club. Fight Club, don't talk. Yeah, right? Right? I'm not one of their members, but if they'd have made me one, I'd have shut the hell up. <laughs> not against the little cannibalism now and again. I mean, I mean my shrimp's a pedivore. What do you guys care? Did I just ruin office for you? Good. Because uh, it's a fucking remake. It wasn't even funny the first time around. And the second time around, you guys worship it like a fucking, what, did NBC feed you fucking retard pills? What's going on here? What's going on? No friends. It's all, oh my God, it's all funny because that was, that was some shitty writing, okay? Not every show is going to be perfect. Not every show is going to fit your narrative. And sometimes you need a clown to walk in with a gun and blow your fucking head off. Because, because God, come on, you know? How many more fucking unfunny TV shows we have to sit through that they're going to sell you commercials for shit you don't want and probably cause cancer with you anyway? But don't worry about your Cheerios. Those polyglycinates don't matter at all. I'm sure they won't stay in your fat. But get vaccinated because you need that heavy-duty mercury in your system. Because, you know, it's the good mercury. It's what plants crave. Okay. You know? Just, right? I'm on the know. I know what's going down. The deep is going down. You guys will all be shocked. You'll all be shocked at the number of arrests. And all the people that have been shitty to me for the last three years can kiss my fucking ass. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah. Remember when we were talking about going down the rabbit hole and I followed the motherfucker? And you guys were like, no, you're crazy, Jerry. Why would you follow us down the rabbit hole? Because the truth matters, man, because I'm a fucking topical comic. And I noticed a long time ago, my news stories didn't match up. Because shit was going on, and then shit was being said. And then shit was going on, and shit was being said. Next thing you know, you don't know who to trust. But all I know is orange man bad. So, whatever, man, whatever, that's your problem, that's your fucking fault anyway, because I'll tell you what, if you hadn't made the annoying orange so lovable, he would not have gotten elected. So, right? 
Am I wrong? Am I the wrong rally? Are we going to be Democrats or Republicans or we on the inside? It's all deep state shit. All your presidents, your former presidents, are all fucking devil worshippers. They're all going to die. They're all going to die real soon. It's going to be great. I can't wait. I can't wait to see Hillary's feet dangling. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait to see them. You know, they'll be like, oh, well, these hate crimes. You know, fuck you. You're all you've been lying for years. You're lying like Jesse Smollett. Let's bring that sucker down. They're talking about the word lynching in the media. Now suddenly, Jesse Smollett's case pops up, but they won't let it go because it was a fake lynching. It wasn't a real thing. Because if you honestly think two fucking white guys are going to go downtown Chicago after dark, carrying bleach <laughs> and rope, you are out of your fucking mind. We're in a MAGA hat. It does not happen. The story sucks. You need a script editor. That's the problem. That is the problem with the whole, whole deep state shit. All the talented guys are dead. They're dropping like flies. Now they're handing it off to their fucking idiot children who don't know nothing. They don't know how to fucking manipulate forest fires properly so you don't find out the forest fires are actually burning a rail line path so they can collect FEMA insurance money over the top of it. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. Because I'll tell you what. Cars don't burn and trees don't sit next to them when they do. Because it's microwaves and they're doing it from space. Surprise, fucking surprise. Oh, we have another forest fire. What's the cause this week? Oh, well, we had this trash can, garbage truck driving around, dropping all sorts of it's bullshit. You know it's bullshit. You're setting money. This is FEMA money you're fucking with. And she's bitching about the insurance earlier, about how we have to all pay for it. And then suddenly, I give a fuck about the fucking forest fires, because now I've got to pay for some shit. And it wasn't even real. It was bad special Sharknado tornado effects. It's the same subdivision they're burning over and over and over again. They just film it from another angle. Oh, look, there's another house burning down. Really? Why aren't the trees down next to it, those pine trees? Why aren't those fucking pine trees burning? I'll tell you why. Because microwaves don't burn trees. Am I right? They're the voices in your head. We start chipping ourselves. This is the whole process, man, of the deep state. So here's what they do. First off, they get you on Facebook, and they get you not being able to live without that validation every day. Then they put it in your phone. Now you're carrying the technology around with it. The next step is they're going to get it in glasses so you can wear it around with you, and it's always around you. And then they'll implant it in you, and then the AI takes over, and you're fucking done. Puppet City. MK Ultra. You wonder why there's so many weird shootings going on? There's a lot of guys out there that don't make a lot of sense in their shootings. They don't make a lot of sense. There's a lot of white supremacists that don't seem to be white supremacists for some reason. <laughs> I, which uh, kind of bothers me because I'm like, you know what? If I'm labeling a dude a white supremacist, he better not be fucking Iranian. Because <laughs> half Italian, half Iranian is not a white supremacist. Because understand this. Granted, the whole concept of white supremacy is idiotic in the first place. Okay, so you're talking about Europe. So you're talking about this bowl of people fucking... And they're crossbreeding, and there's going to be a pure European. No, there isn't. There's no such thing. There's no such such a white supremacy, a slippery slope of waiting to get busted by that fucking uh, 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 history or ancestry.com. That's what that is, just waiting to get called out. That, oh, maybe you aren't Indian at all after all, Miss Warren. And now you've got to pony up for the fact that it's not, it's not real. It was never real in the first place. There's no white supremacy. It's stupid as fuck. It's dumb. But I know that if you were that stupid that you were this person to be a white supremacist, you would have higher standards than letting a half Iranian, half Italian dude in your clan. Because there are standards to clan them, I would assume. You can't just let anybody in. I mean, I, I mean, okay, granted, Matt, maybe they've changed. Maybe they've come around to the social justice warriors convince the clan to be more accepting of others. So that they can go, you know, you want to go ahead, you want to go shooting there? What are you going to do? Jamal, let's go shooting. All right, all right, I got nothing. This doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense at all. Why? Because they're running out of assets. That's right. Not enough people are doing enough drugs to be manipulated into shootings. And that's why I'm disappointed in you guys. I had a lot of hopes for you guys. I thought maybe we could do some real action somewhere. Mango, tango, banana crop. So I'm parched. I gotta drink some memory water. <laughs> you know, and my sets used to be a lot funnier when I drank. Uh, so sobriety isn't really all that much fun. 
and my weed wore off a long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. And they would ask about anxiety. Do you feel anxiety? Yeah, I do. Usually it's right after I smoke and somebody just smell it on me. And uh, fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> but they got a great backyard out back. So we're going to do that later. So, yeah, I mean, it's great. I know that's one thing. I, I, ah, man, I've been in a drug war for so many years. Uh, well, nobody ever thanks me for my efforts. I tell you what, I'm really disappointed about that. Because I've, anyway, I've done some shit. I've done real drug warrior shit. I used to buy a pomegranate weed. You guys know what that is? Pomegranate weed, that's a weed that when you break it all up, about 7 million seeds fall out. It's like, yeah, it's like a Plinko machine or Skittles on a tin roof. You know, you just go. <laughs> but I used to smoke all this dish weed, and I saved the seeds. I had like a 50-gallon barrel of seeds, and I saved them. And uh, I worked for McNamara Flower Company. I would do flower deliveries all over town, and nobody questioned the dude wearing a flower jacket carrying seeds. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Didn't happen to me. I wanted all around Indianapolis. I got the governor's mansion. They got a the weekly delivery every week, and I went and I delivered, and I sprayed fucking seeds all over the place. I threw it. Like, I was seriously, I had a hat and a bag on the side. I was just chugging it. I had a straw in my mouth. I was like, hey, I'm going to get home and get a half pint. Oh, no, 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 let's get those. You know, uh, there was seed everywhere. And then I got the adopt the highway meeting that the police use, the state police downtown. I saturated that bitch. I, I was like, I, I, that was so much seed with like John Holmes or Johnny Appleseed. I don't know, but I covered that whole thing with so much seed. So much seed. And, uh, you know, it was just great. And it didn't matter if it grew. I just wanted, you know, if it sprouted a leaf that the gardener would know, they're losing. And that was the whole point. It was demoralizing from within. That was what I was doing back in the day. You know. So, drugs are a lot of fun. You should all experiment with drugs. Do a lot of drugs. I mean, yeah, because we're going to go. If you find the experimental shit, you'll finally trust me in some of this other shit. Mushrooms are great, but stay home. <laughs> Stay home. The problem, the problem with doing drugs is when you forget you're doing drugs. That's the worst part. And do it while you're out driving around or hanging around. Don't do mushrooms in a golf course. For the love of God, go back to nature because there's no nature in a golf course. It is all manicured, dead nature. There's no life there. It's just a bunch of guys doing Satan's business. You know, and, uh, you know so don't do It's a bad trip. I'll just tell you that. It's a, uh, it can be a lot of fun, too, though. I did find my spirit animal once. Uh, it was a bear. It was a, a big, big old bear. And, uh, and he said, oh, you can prevent forest fires. And I was like, I spent that whole labor day putting out people's fires and shit. And uh, I was like, you don't think I'll save the fire? I'm in this LA. And sure my home. And sure my home. It's radiation from the sky. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, they got mad at me. And, of course, you know, I, I kind of held it against my spirit animal for a while. And uh, then I met the other one, and that one told me to give a hoot, and I told him to fuck right off. Uh, I was done at this point. This was a bad trip. So, <laughs> you guys know if you tell the cops that you're high, they'll clean out your car. <laughs> they will, and they want to. That's why there's always four or five cars there. Why else would they be there? They're like defending a steak and shake or something. They're uh, looking for something to do. And I always like to give them something to do, and they're efficient too, man. They get the ashtrays, they get the glove compartments, they get the insides of the tires. I mean, they get the whole whole car swept out nicely, which is great. And, but just, you know, you know, don't tip them, right? Because that's a bribe, you go to jail. It's, you know, so you just encourage them. But you know, keep that in check too, because it's really easy to go over the top with your compliments, you know what I mean? Because you get a little too over-familiar, and the last cop I was talking to was like, Mr. Goble, this car is a pig sty. Well, great, I guess you won't have any trouble finding your way around then, will you, officer? And, uh, that was the noise I made at the cavity search moments later. That was pretty much it. Pretty much it. That's uh, made a new friend on the side of the road that night. Found out the long arm of the law is a finger. And, uh, <laughs> And also found out I didn't have cancer, so that was really sweet. Uh, saved $80 on a doctor copay, you know, it's great. Right? Just take the positive with whatever you can get, you know? So, but, uh, I used to be uh, from North Dakota years years ago as my youth, and we moved to Indiana. And uh, my, my folks, they told me to pick a travel game, and uh, I picked Operation. Because, uh, you know, I, I want to be a clown doctor. And, uh, <laughs> Well, it's really important, you know, because it keeps the laughter alive. It's like, you know, 
gotta help, you know, do something. And, and I, I did, and uh, we had a 14 hour drive ahead of us. And I was like, <coughs> are we there yet? <coughs> are we there yet? <coughs> are we there yet? To get out of the driveway. And uh, <laughs> took my batteries away. I never had to look, work on a live clown again. Uh, forced me out of clown school. I, I couldn't be a doctor anymore. It was just creepy. Because a kid playing Operation Without Batteries is actually playing Autopsy. <laughs> and uh, nothing cool about that, not today. Maybe back in the day when Quincy was around, the old farts would have got that joke. But, uh, you know, because he, he had a boat and a blonde at the end, and you were like, Quincy's getting laid no matter what. He's still got to handle dead bodies, but Quincy's getting laid. And that was really the takeaway message from the intro credits. Is Jack Klugman with that face getting ass. I mean, it's possible. If it's possible for guys like Lemmy from Motorhead, it's possible for yes. you. It's possible for you, you know? So, um, you know, but the option now is like, you know, you got the same scenario. You got a, you know, a houseboat and it's like Dexter, it's just a lot more visqueen, you know? Not as cool. Um, you know, I never got to play that game again after that. And, uh, uh, my, uh, my parents played it though, without me. I know, I know, I hated it. I would sneak up to the door at night and I'd listen in. And then here, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Oh, are we there yet? I mean, Dad's really bad at this. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Was that, no, that, was, that was a clean, dirty joke. I violated. I didn't talk about anything bushy. So, so there we go. That's what I was missing in this set. I don't normally work dirty because I'm insane. Uh, it's usually more, it's easier just to talk about the crazy and just let the crazy happen because fucking doesn't really happen so much on this end anymore. I mean, look at this. Would you? No, you wouldn't. No, it's just a trend now. It's just a trend. It's okay. You know, and I'd have to have disclosures. You guys wouldn't want to see me naked. There's no way. Because I got like a flap issue down here. Uh, I'm an older guy, so I got a big sack. I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to ruin the mood, but I think, you know what I mean? You should know, as a full disclosure, that, you know, if I stood naked on a sand dune and the wind caught me just right, I could go parasailing with my nutsack. Uh, I just like. <laughs> then I'd, I'd buzz the neighbor's house. <laughs> I'm Batman! Swear to me! <laughs> of course, they just think I'm Rocky the Flying Squirrel because all they can see are my nuts, but that's just an ending joke. So, <laughs> but I'm scared of t uh, taffy pullers. And, uh, uh, escalators, I'm very terrified. Escalators sets off the PTSD. Ferris wheels, after the last time, never again. Never again. Was, you know, and beach landings are the worst. You know, it really is, you know, well, because you come down and you think you're going to scooch across real easy, but then your sack gets in the water there and it gets in the undertow, and you're like trying to walk out, and it pulls you right back in, and you're trying to walk out, and it pulls you right back in, and you do that about 15, 20 times, and then the lifeguards come out because they think you're trying to drag a dead body out of there, and it's not, it's just my sack, and I'm trying to still avoid it and still be cool, and Speedos were me not meant to handle that much stress, that was not going to work, I don't know what I was thinking, but... You know, and uh, you know, and I'm dating, so yeah, I don't know. Old guy dating is weird, cause I, like I said, I'm fixed, so I don't get out of the yard much. You know, I, mean, I don't, you know, they say oh, it's a bit, it's like when you fix your dog or your cat, they just kind of sit in the corner all day. Go, what the fuck's the point? And uh, they lick their balls because they can. No ribbon red necessary to be removed. They can just do what they want to do. But. Uh, Now I know the acid's working. <laughs> so. You move over. Move over. Eat more chicken. <laughs> what I want to see is I want to see, can somebody pretend to be gay and have him beat you up out front? That would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be the best, that would be the best hate crime ever that we've faked this week. Because uh, there are a lot of Eat more chance. Weird. 
I don't know, man. I felt like saying moo moo buckaroo, but I don't know if you guys would get that joke. That's a little... It's like fart football. You remember? You don't. But you, you say it anyway. Uh, and we'll keep going because I can't remember either. <laughs> That was actually it's here for a sex party. Uh, that's yeah. These are the furries. This is your future, guys. This is what you get. This is what you get. There you go. Eat more pork. Eat more pork. Pork in it for sure. Yeah. Let's see. I think it's broken, but I'm still working it. You know, I said I was just telling him I was fixed too. I had to, Sometimes it feels that way, buddy, but you just gotta increase your grip. You can make it work. You just sometimes the, you know they said the testosterone that I'm willing to sacrifice a little hair and eat some more hey, jello. But I gotta use more hand not. pressure. I'll see you later. Here. I didn't catch that. That was probably funnier than what I said. Doesn't matter. It was another tape, Joe. We're gonna have to edit the cow guy out. Did you get him? Did you get him? I feel like I I don't know, man. This I feel like we should just roll with him. I don't know. I just feel like I, I don't like Beto O'Rourke, and I know he's a furry, but I I gotta take out my furry rage. You know, the, uh, furry. But uh, when did that come up? I, I'm sorry. I just find that hilarious that you sexualize your stuffed animals. Uh, you know, I know my dog does it. But, you know, and you know, you know, and that's usually where it starts. It's the permission when like you you let your your pet pump an animal, a stuffed animal. What you're doing is giving that. Was he still going on and off? Oh, he's out there. He's a fucking star tonight, guys. Uh, he's about to get cooked. I'll bet. Meth is a hell of a drug. Uh, I can't say too much. I went as a, a six foot tall rabbit named Captain Carrot for sixth grade. So. And the comic book people remember that. I got two people over here that don't have a life. Uh, <laughs> We can wax on about comic book characters and how the, the fact that they took away the history and the continuity from superheroes makes them completely pointless because it's just another exercise in stupid storytelling and bad bringing back from the dead plot lines. This pretty much sums up all six episodes, seasons of Gotham, right? Um, we just did that. Did we do that? I did that anyway. And I didn't care if there was a laugh. I just went with it because I have trust in drugs. Uh, no matter how bad things get, I know I will still be on drugs, but you're not. And it's... <laughs> As long as we're having fun, folks. As long as we're having fun. So, Willy Wonka talked about the Oompa Loompa stuff earlier. Yeah, yeah the everlasting gobstopper. You know the secrets there, right? You know the secrets to Willy Wonka? Who the real villain is? It's Grandpa Joe. He's the villain. It's, it's pretty basic when you really look at it from the right perspectives because they're, they're basically they're grooming this kid. You know what I mean? So, Charlie starts out. He's this little kid. He's selling newspapers to buy bread to feed his family. He's hustling gutters for quarters. He's this close to sucking a dick at a bus station. He's in, he's in a world of trouble, okay? Right? So he finds the golden ticket, all right? And he runs home. His life has changed. Suddenly, there's another child-producing child molester that shows up and gets him Slugworth, right? Whole other side story. Candy industry is riddled with child molesters. That's why Slugworth's creepy looking, right? You, you know, he's got the feely Joe Biden thing going on. Hand and shoulder. You know, he's... So, uh, yeah, so he goes home, and then who does Charlie have to go see? He goes to see the four old swingers that won't get out of bed. <laughs> they haven't been out of bed in 20 years, and they all have porn names, yeah. right? Grandpa Joe, Grandma Josephine, Grandpa George, Grandma Georgina. Those are porn names. There is no way, for coincidental purposes, that that worked out. They are continually in a four-poster bed. There is a stripper pole in the middle of that room. <laughs> right? He does the buck and wing. Grandpa finds out Charlie's got the keys to a brand new life. Suddenly, that old fucker can dance. What the hell happened with that? He's got a bucket wing and plan moves. Also, it's another other clues that he's a liar. His hat is on top of everything. He's a shut-in who hasn't been out for 20 years. Yet his hat and his pants are the two top things on that pile of shit. He is a shut-in. There should be a pizza box, a dead cat, some old mail, another pizza box. There's no fucking way that's on top, right? Goes to the factory. What happens? Charlie has to sign over uh, his rights on a huge contract that was not vetted. 
right? Totally, totally. You know this kid's getting screwed. He's probably going to be sold to China for organ parts. That's just kind of how it's going to go. It's going to be a bad way for Charlie no matter what. First incident, fizzy lifting drink. Industrial espionage, right? That's what this is. Because Grandpa Joe ain't been high in a while. So he decides to take a hit. So they're popping this shit. He's got this kid floating around in the room. There's a ceiling is covered with a, a razor blade, swirling blades of death above him. And then reality does not kick in. Optimal ending that I think would be better is if you know old people and how they fart, you will know that the O-ring isn't as solid as it used to be. Right? So basically what you're talking about is dropping a Mentos and a Coke bottle. Grandpa Joe theoretically should have been shot through those blades and chopped to pieces. And that would have been a great ending to the movie. <laughs> that would be justice. That would be great. I mean, as, as he loses air and farts to the ground, you know, he'd just leave a big trail of blood on the tube. Sure, the Oompa would have to clean it up, granted. I get that. They were a slave race of people that were fed on chocolate, and they were clothed in chocolate, and nothing but chocolate. They were actually uh, not even midgets, they were diabetic. They were all amputated at the knees. And uh, that's why when they did their little dances, they didn't move the knees when they did their thing, you know? And they were like some employees in a steakhouse. They were always pulling some fat kid out of a tube or some shit like that, you know, or having to sing happy birthday song. It's just not a good not a good life. Not a good life. Okay, I saw I got the light here a second ago. I, I, you guys seem like you're pretty hip, but I'm going to scare the fuck out of the girls in the back of the room. Uh, just wait. This is great. Part of my, my kick for doing this, besides the drugs, uh, is, is the adrenaline rush and being able to watch the expressions of people who don't know what's going on. Uh, it's my passion, ruining people's days and making them freak out. I live for that. I, I, you know, some people laugh and chuckle, but sometimes I just like to watch the what the fuck expression on people's faces. And that's why I've come up with this bit. It's uh, do you guys like impressions? No, I don't do impressions. I just make bad first ones. But uh, my dad used to do great impressions. He used to do Elvis. Every morning he'd get up, go to the bathroom, and die on the toilet. Uh, it's impressive. It would linger all day. So. Uh, all right, so here's here's a, a series of impressions I like to do for my dad, uh, dedicated to him, uh, called Impressions with Belts. Uh, no, really, I, I would have loved the, the, the attention. He never paid any attention to us, so this is really a cry for help. Uh, all right, first impression from the movie Anaconda. Here we go. Sorry, it's only on the big screen. Okay, you guys can't see that. I got my shirt out here. But here's the, the last moments of Michael Hutchinson from NXS. Last moments of Michael Hutchins for NXS. You know better. Oh, that's the stuff. Oh, that's the stuff. <laughs> the devil inside. The devil inside. Every single one has got the devil inside. I don't think. Like, I don't know. You guys are just gonna leave me hanging on that one? Let's go. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. You guys aren't music people. I get it. Okay. The last moments of David Carradine, or John Carradine. No, David Carradine. Yeah, last moments of David Carradine. Here, here we go. Here we go. Last moments of David Carradine. That's fine. I don't care. I'm not going to do the Robin Williams fine. Oh. It's too nanu nanu. I get it. Uh. I still do that. Okay, here's my last impression. Mr. Rogers on his day off.
It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day for a neighborhood. And you guys have been great. Good night. My name is Jerry Gill. Thank you for having us. Uh, you guys are a wonderful crowd. Have a great night. <laughs>